last night while I was meditating. Just you know, sometimes we gotta go, we gotta go back to come forward. Being that you gotta remember what it was and who it was if you're gonna get to that place where you need to be right now. Remembrance is a good thing, even now as we're in this season for 10 days of all. In the Jewish custom, it's a time of reflection, it's a time of remembrance. Looking back over the past year, because in, in, in the Jewish custom, this is already the new year. Us on this side of the pond, so to speak, we're waiting till January, but how do you know God ain't waiting? It is. Amen. You got to learn how to get in the timing of God and in the perspectives of God and where God is. But it's already a time to reflect. We're in a ninth month. Nine being new beginnings. God says, I'm giving you a new beginning and a new start now. Amen. But I need you to remember. I need you to reflect. And whatever it is you didn't get right, repent. Right. This is the time. This is the day. The Bible says it's the day that you hear his voice. What? Don't harden your heart, but open your heart. So what again is this moment, uh, this season of time reflective of as we're in a feast, is a time to open your heart. To God, in the area I have not allowed you to come in, please come in. In the area I have not turned over to you willfully, please take charge. Why? Because I can't afford to do this without you. I need your anointing to flow. I need your peace, your joy, your holiness, your prayer. I need everything you have to willfully flow unto glory to God. Glory to God. Just lift your hands and worship just before I transition and get into where we're going today. We're going to Revelation, the third chapter. Just lift your hands. Just celebrate God's goodness. Nobody knows like you know what he's done in these last 19-some days for you. I'm just talking about this month. I ain't going all the way back to January. I'm talking about just what he's done this month. How good he's been, how awesome he's been, how gracious he's been, how he has kept you how he has subverted attacks against your life. How he made the enemy behave. You didn't even see it coming, but he stopped him. He blocked him. Yes, you How he moved in your midst. How he moved in your behalf. How he got something to you. The enemy was purposing to hold up. But he made it release. The Bible talks about it in the Roman. We're in the Lord's release. God releasing unto you everything you need. Yes, yes. And so even at this midway point of the month, it ain't even over yet. I'm still daring to believe God to do something awesome, something supernatural. Even before the end of this year, even in the midst of all that's going on, God's going to turn it around for you. It may be dark in the world, but it's light in the kingdom. It may be dark in your neighborhood, but the lights are on at your house. Yes, I prophesy over you in your house that there is light, that there is the glory of the Lord. Yes, that there is glory, there is glory at your house. Father, we love you today. We thank you today. We give you honor today. We could be who we are, where we are without you, God. Many want to take credit, God, but all the credit belongs to you. Many want to say they had a hand in it, but God, but no hand in the thine. But truly, thou art the potter, and we are but the even when all or scratch you start us over. And you bring us to a place 
that you would show us for. For that we say thank you. Mm. Thank you. As we come to the head of this year, God, as we stand in awe of you, God,
Christ Jesus. This is not a season of life and time to allow condemnation to rob you of the greatest opportunity you're standing before. Yeah, I know it's dark in the world. Things are going on. But listen, this ain't no time to be in condemnation. The spirit of a living God is at work. Hear me what I say. The spirit of a living God is at work. What's he working on? He's judging. What's he working on? He's setting things in order. What's he working on? You and me. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. This is the season and time to bring your flesh under subjection. Paul said, daily I buffet my body. I bring it into the will of God. Because right now in a season like this, flesh is trying to go in all kinds of directions. No, no, no. We ain't walking by our flesh. We're walking by what? The Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Look at that word, half made. When did that half made come into being? When he hung on that cross. When he hung, bled, and died and rose again with all power in his hand and then turned that power over you. Guess what? You were made free. From the law of sin and death. Because what is the law of sin and death? That you expire. Without him. Come on now. For what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his son in the likeness. Of sinful flesh. And for sin. Look what he did. Condemned. Sin. In the flesh. So where is the condemnation? In the flesh. What was the purpose of that condemnation? To take out sin. Come on. Come to let sin know you will not rule, reign, and have dominion. Go back to Genesis. What did God give man in, the, in, in, in Genesis when he first created it? Dominion. Well, what did man lose as a result of sin? Dominion. Right. Come on, y'all. So what did Jesus come to give back to man? To me. Okay, okay, y'all want to be slow with me this morning. Go to Romans 5. Catch up, because Holy Ghost didn't teach. Listen, there is no condemnation if you're in Christ. Because God says, I'm redeeming the time. I'm giving you back what you lost. But you got to bring your flesh under subjection. I'm calling you back, and I'm going to get to it hopefully in Revelation 3, but I'm giving you back the seal of dominion. Amen. Amen. Look at this. Romans 5. Let's go to verse 12. Wherefore, it is by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for they all have sinned. Ain't nobody in this room today that ain't sinned. Ain't nobody in this room today that ain't missed it. We all have but there's good news. There's good news. Jesus can end it. Look at this. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there's no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude. You didn't do what he did, but you were still guilty. Remember the story of the man who came. When you remember it, the man came and he said, Look, man, I done kept all the commands. I, I, I got it together, man. I'm good. I know all ten of them. I know them by heart. That ain't problem. Here's another command. Let go everything you got and come follow me. Then you see. Come on, come on. See, 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 he felt justified before the construction came. He felt justified. He went to Sunday school. He learned all of the words. He memorized. He had a head knowledge, but no heart knowledge. Right, right, right. Uh -huh. Just like many today, you got a head knowledge. But there's a heart revelation. Much of what's taking place in matters of the heart. 
until your heart is converted, until your heart is changed. God said, I'll take out the stony heart and I'll give you a heart of flesh. Why? Because you need to be sensitive to me. The Bible talks about what is called a proceeding word. Yes, there were ten commandments, but out of the mouth proceeded the word of God. And the word of God said, now let it all go. Just as much as a commandment as the ten, just let it all go. Can you give it all up now? I've got more for you. I've been waiting on you to get to this point, to turn everything loose but me. But here you are, and now because of what you had, you ain't ready to go. Can I safely say, some will miss the rapture in this season because they don't want to let go of the world. They don't want to let go of their goods, their houses, and all this stuff. Ain't nothing in life should matter more to you than God. Right. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Preach, preach, preach. Whew. Nevertheless, they are from Adam no more, even though them that have not seen after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto men. Man, if you could just realize how blessed you are, because you know him. How blessed you are because of what he done. You sing the song, but you have no revelation. Look what the Lord has done. Yeah, look what he's done. What about what he done? Who's the recipient of what he done? How much of the pleasures of God and the joys of God and the gifts of God are you experiencing? Without thanksgiving. Bible talks about in the last day, many would become unfaithful, ungrateful. We take a minute and he says, you don't know how to discern me. And he said, for this cause, many are weak, many are sick, many are dead. Many have died because they didn't recognize if it had not been for the Lord. Who was keeping me? Just look at the book, you know, it's all in the book. So the grace has brought, was brought through Jesus, have abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation. Are you following me? I'm waiting for the Lord you're here. Listen, listen. The judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses to justification. Okay, let me see how I make this right. Everything the enemy is doing is to condemn you. Everything he's using to entice you is to bring you to a place of condemnation. But everything God did through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was to justify you. Okay. All right. Stay right here in Romans 5. Go all the way back to verse 1. What does it mean to be justified? So therefore, verse 1, Romans 5, 1, therefore be justified by faith. This is a faith walk. Let me work this right quick. What does it mean that it's a faith walk? You might believe this. You might believe this. You're going to have to hold on to what you believe in the midst of what you see. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Did you just catch that? There's a lot of things we're seeing, but what is our faith saying? Huh? Where do I find my faith in the midst of what I see? Look back over your life. And see what the Lord has done. Where do I find faith to hold on in the midst of a national, global crisis? Look what the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. For who? Uh-uh, I ain't made no for you. Huh? Because it ain't about my testimony, about his testimony, her testimony. What did he do for you? Has he done enough for you to hold on? Therefore, being justified by faith. Look at this. 
Don't miss it. We have peace. Man, why is this important? Because I need my peace. Huh? I need my peace. We being justified means you have So what does it mean to have peace? That means I ain't in the word. Ain't no need to worry. The night's gonna come. Ain't no need to worry. But as soon as the night comes, so will it be. Huh? Weeping may endure for a night. But the joy is scheduled for the morning. Did you wake up with your joy this morning? Huh? Maybe you did because you forgot you're justified. Maybe you forgot you've got peace. Did not Jesus get on the phone and say, Peace? You ain't going nowhere. Peace be. He had already gave a command, we're going to the other side. We always got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Jesus in the boat asleep. Scripture said they had to wake him. This is what Rosh Hashanah, the feast of the trump, is the alarm. It's wake up. Wake up. The Bible said they awake him. He was asleep. He went to sleep because of fear. He went to sleep because he was afraid. He was asleep because he was at rest and peace. But every, see, watch this. You can be asleep and at peace while everybody else is in fear and turmoil. Right. The disciples whom he spoke to but paid no attention to the teacher almost missed the lesson. They woke him up and what did he say? Oh, ye, yeah. little faith. Did not I say unto you, we are going? Y'all better hear this today. To the other side. I just need you to be at peace right now. Storms will come. All of this stuff. We just had Saturday. And now they ran out of names. They got two more sitting out there. Now they're going to the numbers. It don't matter. We going to the other side. Sometimes it takes the storm, the wind, and the rain to push you you to the other side. <laughs> By whom, watch this now, verse 2, By whom we have also, we have access. That was one of our words from back here this year. Access. We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Pastor, what does that mean? That means because of this, you keep looking for Jesus. Okay, what does Hebrews say? Looking unto Jesus. Oh, go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews. Let's walk it out. Looking unto Jesus. Who? Who is Jesus? Huh? Is he not the author? Is he not the finisher of your faith? See, the, the, the question must be asked in this seat. Who are you trusting? Them or him? Look at Hebrews 12. Wherefore, seeing we are, we are accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, look at that, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. See, it's sin that takes you off course. I got into it last week. It is the consciousness. It is the continual remembering of sin. So what am I saying? I'm trying to explain a whole lot in this here. So what am I saying we need to do in these 10 days off? It ain't about remembering sin. It's remembering God. It's understanding that he went to the cross to eliminate my greatest enemy outside of me. Oh, y'all didn't catch that one, you thought I was going to say sin was your greatest enemy. No, you your greatest enemy. Right, 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 right. You your greatest enemy if you allow yourself to remain conscious 
of the past, never looking to the future. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm pretty big too. Amen. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which don't easily beset us, and let us run with, run with patience the race that is set before us. You ain't a race, man. Yeah. What's the race? You're racing to get home. I'm racing to get home. Where's home? With him. Where's home? Next to him at the throne. But you can't give up your patience because of what's going on. You can't go back and start reflecting on what was and lose your objectivity to see what is. What is the object of your faith right now? Mm. There it is, verse 2. What? So I'm in a race. I got to be mindful that I don't allow sin to beset me. I got to keep a vision of the future. Now he says, What? How do I do it? Looking unto Jesus. Okay, now watch this. If I'm looking unto Jesus, then Jesus becomes the object of what I'm looking at. Hmm? Not to the left, not to the right, but my eyes are fixed. I'm looking unto who? Jesus. Why Jesus? He's the author and he's the. Okay, y'all, let me work a little bit slow. If he's the author or the start, and if he's the finisher, how can I know the outcome if I don't stay with him? Y'all didn't catch me. Let me back it down. See, looking at Jesus helps me to not look at what I see. Okay, y'all love this scripture we're quoting. I know the thoughts I think towards you. Okay, do you really know them? Let's stop right there. If I poll the room and ask you, what is Jesus thought of you? The answers would be there. The number one answer should be, he loves me. But if he loves you, what did love do for you? What did love sacrifice for you? What did this love require of you? What then is love's reward? Well, that was a lesson in this day. I hope you yeah, I'm about to decipher that out of the tape. Ain't none of this on no notes no more. <laughs> this is just stuff we got to deal with. We're in the days of all, man. Right, right, right. That's a God that loves you. Yeah. So much he hung bread and died for you. So much he covered a multitude of your sins. Right. Not his. And he did it to give you a future and an expected end. And you don't know it. You're not conscious of it. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You just sound, he got God time in his hand. Who endured the cross? Why at the cross? At the cross? Because he did something for you. At the cross. But that woman goes somewhere in the other task. Huh? I had no conscious idea she was singing that. I ain't know nothing about that. Listen! That's where it happened. That's where your miracle happened. If God never does anything else for you, look what he done. If God never opens another door, if God never provides another dime for you, look what he did. What did he do, preacher? He gave you an escape out of this world into the kingdom. He endured the cross, despising the shame. Listen, whose shame was that? Sure. Y'all didn't even catch me. Let me break it down. He didn't even let you go 
food at. See, you think you've been something. Hear what the scripture said. You have not suffered under the blood. Right, right, right. Uh-huh. Ain't nobody in here bleed. You may feel like you bleed. But ain't nobody in here to bleed out. Come on, come on. Yeah. It was his blood that hit the ground. What can wash away my sin? but the blood of Jesus. So it couldn't be your blood because your blood wasn't strong enough to cleanse you. That's why he don't say I don't want to sacrifice and bulls go. He said this ain't working no more. Right, 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 right. I need something stronger to deal with. So he went to the cross for you. He took the shame. But don't miss this. He endured the cross. He despised the shame. But he sat down at the right hand of God. Y'all still ain't talking. Look at this, look at this, look at this. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Look at you still. How do you go to a cross, be made ashamed, and now sit in the presence? Okay, let's, let's go another route. If he then is the first fruits, then everything that comes after the first follows suit. So if he had not did what he did for you, you would not have the opportunity you're soon to have because of him. Ooh, I know he's there. This is just what it is, isn't it? Trying to help you get there. A way is made. A path has been laid. Right, right. The Bible says he said, I'm at the right hand of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. Where's the battleground now for you? It's in your mind. Right. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's what you don't know that's hurting you the most. And I'm trying to help you to know what you don't know so you can make this thing. You're growing weary in your mind because you don't understand. God said, I already made a way of escape. There is no temptation taking you but such as the coming of man. And with the temptation, God said, I'm making a way of escape. In these 10 days of all, find your escape. Get your peace back. Get your joy back. Get back in the presence of God and realize he has already made the way. We quote, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, but you don't believe it? Well, if he's the way, then you need to follow him into the way. If he's the truth, who do you need to listen to the most? His voice should be the greatest voice in your life. Everything you go to do, you should line it up against the truth. Here's what Paul said. Paul said, listen, man, I'm betwixt. I'm between two places. I got a fight going on. You know the story. He said, Romans all so Paul said, I got a fight going on. Okay. Come on, come on. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's wrong with the day. Oh, Jesus. What can I get saved? Listen. Listen. This is what Paul said. This is a battle, man. My soul is at stake. He said, but I found out what the problem was. I'm thinking too much. Uh, I've got the wrong thing on my mind. Just hear it up. Go for it. I'm all over the place today. Go to it. See, a lot of times we, well, okay, here you go. Thank you. You your own worst enemy because of what you choose to meditate on. I hear the Holy Ghost. That's when God says, Meditate on me. Renew your mind so you can survive. Go to uh, oh shoot. Philippians. Look what he said. Mm, look at God. Jesus. I love God. Go to Romans. Uh, go to Philippians 4. He'll tie his own stuff. 
This is what I learned. Uh, I'm like, God will teach his own words. You know that? We can study what we want and he'll stand you up there and say, now I'm going to do this. You study what you want. I preach my own message. Did you hear what I'm saying? 
because he obeyed the command. Got to do it. I got to help you. He obeyed and couldn't get in. situation right now, you need to thank him. It doesn't matter how your body feels, you need to thank him. Doesn't matter where your relationships are, you need to thank him. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, everything. Give thanks. Ooh. Come on, y'all. Antidote is all right here. Let your request be made known unto God. Stop talking to folks. Start talking to God. Here's your help. If you talk to God, God will talk to the right folks. Because you might be telling the wrong folk. Yeah. Talk to God and God say, I'll get you the right one. Amen. How you know that Bible? God dealt with Paul, not the wrong one. Then God, then God sent a word down now. Now go down there and talk to him. Right. Right. He's got to give him his sight back. Right. Right. The anointing, ooh, yeah, he, the anointing was on him for his recovery of sight. See, somebody's got you anointed. That means you want to talk to God. Don't sit, I don't need no false prophets coming to me. I don't need no devil worshipers. I don't need no witches and no warlock. God who? Because hell's looking to enlarge itself. That's why he said these last days, beware of false prophets. Everybody pointing you to them and not to him. Be mindful. Everybody pointing you to a religion or an organization, be mindful. All that's going to pass away. Ain't nothing going to Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word. The Bible. Okay, seven. And the peace of God. There it is again. And the peace of God. Which passes all understanding. My God, let God be this Shall keep your mind and your heart through Jesus. Through your relationship with Jesus. Through your encounter with the Word. God said you will have peace. And your heart will be at peace. And your mind will be at peace. Finally, brethren. I went all the way there to get to right here. Finally, brethren. If you get all that in place, here's what you got to do. Watch what you think. Watch what you meditate. Watch what you allow into your spirit, into your heart, into your soul. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, 
That's what I got to think on. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, it's important for the good report. Scripture, whose report are you going to believe? Right, right. Do you know how many lies are out there right now? Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. I mean, television is feeding some of the greatest lies and deceptions you ever heard. Yep. And you can't listen to it all. Okay, thank you, Lord. You and I are looking for the good report. Right. That's true. Because it's the truth that's going to make you free. And freedom should also be a point of objectivity in this season. I'm looking to be free. I ain't looking for bondage. Thank God he came to deliver me out of bondage. But remember what, the, what, what, what Israel did. Send us back to Egypt. It's getting rough right now. Send us back to Egypt. It's death in Egypt, are you sure? He delivered you from there, but you want to go back to there? Come on, come on, yeah. You want to go make them bricks you cried to stop making? You want to drink again from the same bottle that nearly killed you? Oh, you know I had to go there. You want to get in that same bed with that line on it that she cut your hair the last time? Come on, y'all. Okay, here's your word. It is what it was. Jesus. Hear me, when It is what it was. That's what you say. It don't change. It don't change. So why are you going back to what ain't gonna change? That's why God brought you. That's why God brought you out of the world. We got too many in this season going back in the world. He brought you out. That's what you used to do, or it's supposed to be, what you used to do. It, it should have been the way you used to act till you met Jesus. So, so some things are a good report. And if there be any excellence, that's what the word virtue means, and if there be any praise, there's your word. Think on this. Think on this. Think on this. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace is going to be with you. God said, I want to be with you. I want to help you. I want to show you. But you got to deal with your fault life. You got to deal with your associations. You got to deal with what you're listening to, what you're hearing, what you're taking in. You got to crucify your flesh. You got to bring your body under subjection. And you're going to have to learn how to pray. You're going to have to learn how to get on your face. Joel. <laughs> mm. Jesus. Hey. Jesus. Joel 2. Ooh. Look at this, y'all. Look at this. Joel 2. I'm going to pick it up in verse 12. Joel 2, verse 12. Look what it says. Everybody there can read it. Come on, now. You don't know where it is. Go to the front of the book. Come on. It's all right. We're in the church. It's school. It's class. It's all good. It's all good. Go to the front of the book. Joel 2, verse 12. We need to see it. Ready? All right, therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning, my God. Turn ye to me. 
Voi itsestään. Therefore now saith the Lord, turn ye even unto me, turn ye even to me, turn ye even to me with all your heart. And with fasting, and with weeping, and with one. Look at them conjunctions. So what does that mean? All those ands means all of this is happening at one time. In these ten days of all. What's gonna happen? And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. If he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Listen, we don't know what. Listen, listen. The whole purpose of right now is because I ain't sure what he's going to do. But I know he's going to move. He might crack the sky or he might see more of what you've been seeing. Come on, this is prophetic today. He's only going to crack the sky and we're out of here or you're going to see more of what you've been seeing. Less ye turn. He's done too much. You can't crucify him again. He ain't going back. Y'all understand? He's not going back to the cross again. He's already been. Right, right, right. So there's nothing else God's got to do or will do. Right, right. It's all on you. Yeah. It's finished. Good word. Yeah. That's what he said at the cross, right? There it is again. We're back to the cross. Why is the cross significant and important? Because that's where it was finished. Right, right, right. Uh -huh. yeah. That's where it was finished. The author and the finisher finished it on the cross. Look what he says. Blow, oh my God, here we are there. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, and let the bridegroom go forth in, of his chamber and the bride out of a closet. Where everybody else out of the closet, how come you in here? Everybody, huh? Everybody is out the closet. What that means is even though y'all don't know. Ain't nobody hiding what they're doing. It's open. Huh? This is who I am. This is what I do. Everybody out the closet. But the church. The ones he brought out of darkness into the marvelous light. The Bible said, put your light on the stick and let it be. I believe had they seen our light, some of this stuff would be in place. Because light overcomes darkness. But apparently there wasn't enough light. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Prayer time. Let them say, say what? Spare thy people. Huh? It's what we do in here on Monday night. It's Monday night. We're here. Lord, spare the people. We're between the porch and the altar. Spare the people. Spare who? Your people. And say, spare the world, spare your people. Yeah. Who's in the most trouble? Yeah. Spare thy people, O oh Lord. 
and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. It was never God's will for the heathen to rule. But because we stayed in the closet, the enemy took an upper hand and he wrote out his plan. But I'm here to tell you, it ain't gonna work. Because just as God got justification and vengeance in Romans 5, he's coming back to get it again. Watch this here, God. Oh, God, look at this. Look at this here. Watch this here. Oh, Lord, give not thine heritage reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Do you know what I know and understand? This is a saying that died when you can't tell people where your God is. Right, right, right. Where is your God? That's what, that's, what, that's, that, that, that's what Elijah did. Call your God. But I'm going to call mine. And the one that answers, he be God. Right, right, right. Uh -huh. But can you call yours? And he answers. Because that's their hundred thousand dollar question. Where you go? Right, right, right. Uh -huh. Y'all see the cat. Uh -huh. World says if you can tell me where your God is, I'll change. Uh -huh. yeah. Because you know what He did for you. You you have a you have witness mm -hmm. of your God. If you can show me the witness I need to see, mm -hmm. I'll change. Watch it here. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. The earth is the Lord and the food is the earth. God, get your land. Hmm? God said, I'm looking for you to rise up. Come to your seat in place of authority. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will, look at this, y'all. Look at what you need to do to see what he needs to do. This is why we're in this season. All right? Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the either. God said, I'll turn it around when you get on your face. God said, I'll turn it around when you get in sackcloth and ashes and begin to realize you can't do this without me. God said, when you get back before me, I'll turn it around. But I will remove a far off from you the northern army and will drive him into the land barren and desolate with his face. He said, there's an army coming against you. There's some things coming against you right now and I'm the only one that can deliver you. America, what you need, I got. But until you get back to me, until you turn back to me. Look what he says. And we drive him to a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and heaven parts toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. God said, I'll do great things if you get back in place. If the priest will get back on the altar, if the people will get back in a place of prayer and thinking correctly, I'll turn it. Yeah. I'll either turn it or deliver you out of it. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? I'll either turn it or deliver you out of it. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring up for the tree bearing her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, that that word is rejoice again. For he hath given you the former rain, modern, and he will cause to, cause to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter rain in the first month. This is the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore you the yield that the locals in. God said, I can give you 2020 back. If you turn. 
If you come back to me, I can give you 2020 back. Exactly. It's my people which are called by my name. But do what? Humble themselves. Get out of pride. Humble yourself. Get low. Get in the face of God and humble yourself. He said, I'll hear from heaven and I'll hear the land. That verse in 7 Chronicles 7, uh, 7 14 is this time right in here to Joel. But there's something you want him to do, but he said, there's something you got to do. And the floor shall be full. Listen to that, it's going full. And I will restore to you the year that the locusts have eaten up the canker worm and the cow's and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. <laughs> uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Huh? Watch this. You can't stop God. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, uh huh. Unless you repent. Oh, my. Oh, my. Unless you ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Unless you humble yourself and pray and begin to think correctly. Right. Amen. Stop looking back. Don't be like Lot's wife. Stop. Looking back, I'm going to close right there. Stop looking back at what was because what was took you out. 